Tonight on Kitchen Table Electronics Repairs, I've got this little thing to unbox. And we'll do a little bit of an evaluation of it. I've been chomping at the bit all week for this to come in. So while I'm unboxing this, I'll show you the picture of this receiver as purchased off eBay. And as you can see, physically there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. All the buttons are intact. The knobs, everything else. So, I'm showing this so that we can see if it arrives in that same condition. This is uh, 40 pounds, roughly, of stereo receiver. So let's just see how it was actually packaged. I see my favorite thing in the world, which is packing peanuts. Uh -huh. But it keeps stuff safe, so at least usually. So, if I can do this without making a mess, probably not. I already see there's not a whole lot of room between the box and the receiver itself, but it looks like it's very well wrapped in uh, bowl wrap there. You can see some of it there, so uh, I'm making a mess of the peanuts, so uh, we'll be back in a second and I'll get this thing out of here. All right, so the receiver has been evicted from the box. Looks like it's been well packaged. This is a new seller, at least according to the eBay feedback. So, uh, so far, I think they did a good job. And the only reason I'm showing this is uh, if anybody, you know, has never bought a receiver off eBay before, um, you can get kind of an idea as to what to uh, expect. Hopefully this is going to be positive. Looks like they taped the electrical cord. This is this is the way I package these things myself when I sell them, uh, or tape decks or whatever. Uh, put the bubble wrap underneath the cord and tape the cord separately. That's that's nice to see. That means they were thinking. And thinking is always appreciated. Removed from its bubble wrap, I can see that it's in the same condition as it was in the photograph, so that's a big thumbs up. The seller did a great job on this one, and just goes to show you um, how things arrive when they're packaged properly. So this should give you, if you never sent a stereo receiver or something like that uh, in the mail, uh, this should give you a good idea of how to package it, because this one arrived in excellent condition, and I don't see any issues with it. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a close-up look at this receiver, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, why I got it. So I picked this Sansui up on eBay for $50. And I picked it up for that price because the seller said that the stereo receiver didn't have any sound. And they said that it came out of DC protection, but it had no sound. That in itself is kind of a dubious statement because there can be several relays in a stereo receiver... And just because you hear a relay click doesn't mean that it's the protection relay coming out and uh, engaging the speakers. So, but I decided for 50 bucks it was well worth it, and here's why. This receiver was built, according to Hi-Fi Engine, 84 to 85. Although I did see sales brochures for this receiver, 86, um, it might have been 87, somewhere around in there. So they were still at least for sale during that time. Uh, this is the SX1130, and this was, if not Sansui's highest end model, it was dam damn near close to that. Uh, so let's talk about some of the uh, specifications on this amplifier. Uh, we've got uh, 0.005% of total harmonic distortion. We've got 130 watts per channel of power and this is real power this isn't this modern sissy la la wattage that we're talking about you know this is real ball busting you know levitate your pets you know call the cops oh my god the building's falling down kind of basic power here so we're, we're, this is a real amplifier inside of this receiver um, the frequency response on this receiver is five hertz 
to 180,000 hertz. So it's way off the charts there as far as the frequency response goes. So we're talking about sub frequency here and just, you know, sound that I don't even think dogs can hear kind of a frequency response. So um, it's incredible for that as well. Uh, it's got uh, VCR input, but uh, one of the best things about this receiver is it's an AM stereo receiver. So it can decode all four of the AM stereo systems that were around when this receiver was made. And that's something you don't see very often in stereo receivers or radios of any kind. So this was a pretty high-end unit that Sansui made and I think they did a really nice job. It looks fantastic. I love I love the AM stereo. I love that that really 80s font there. That's just incredibly awesome. I love that. And uh, this receiver still looks fairly modern. It has a little bit of 80s look to it, which I love. I love the red up here, which you see a lot on the 80s stuff. And one of the things that you'll see in a moment is the uh, volume control. The letters are backlit red, which is really cool. And uh, the faceplate on this thing is aluminum. It's aluminum skin on this here. It's got a nice gloss clear plastic cover right here and the volume control I have to see this this feels like metal to me too yeah I'm pretty sure that's metal that's an aluminum volume knob so it's got some metal in it surprisingly besides despite the fact that it's got plastic buttons at least they feel plastic to me so I took a look at the pictures again after I ordered this receiver and I noticed something about it that I think is why, I know it's why, as a matter of fact, it has no audio coming out of the uh, speakers. So I think this is going to be an easy fix, unless there's something else wrong with the receiver inside, something's wrong with the amplifier section or something like that. I don't think there's actually anything wrong with this receiver. So over here we've got the phono input, auxiliary, tape 1, tape 2, preamp, preamp in, we got the VCR inputs here. So you can, this would be basically a switch box, essentially, when you switch between VCR-A and VCR-B. Uh, actually, that's a video disc player, excuse me. Same thing, though, pretty much. Uh, so you switch between these two, and then you put this out to your TV. The, out, the composite out right there would go to your TV. And uh, you've got your, you know, it's also got a TV tuner in it as well. This is for, um, I think this is for if you want to actually pipe your, uh, sound in from your TV directly from the cable box you output it to your TV right here but uh, I'm not entirely certain that's something I'll have to test at some point see how that actually works and you've got your selection of uh, banjo light connectors back here for the speakers you got three uh, AC outlets here two are unswitched one is not is switched and uh, you got your voltage selector, selector right there for the different parts of the world. And uh, you got your cable antenna plug right here, which is kind of interesting to see. They actually bothered to put that in there. And of course, you got your regular uh, terminals here for standard antenna. You put your loop antenna right there, which this did not come with. You can see made in Japan, which is always nice to see. It usually means quality. You've got an AM channel switch here for 9 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. And uh, you've got uh, input back here, selector for mono or stereo for your audio input for the VCR. And uh, there's one over here for the video disc player as well. And uh, the interesting thing about this receiver is that it can take two different types of phono cartridges. So you just select between the uh, whichever one you had back then. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to see back here. Uh, other than a little bit of a, looks like sticker residue up here. It doesn't look like there's really anything on the case, per se. It looks like it's been taken care of really well. So, uh, now I'll let you in on a little secret. If you haven't noticed from looking at this picture right here, is what do you see that's missing from this stereo receiver that would prevent it from ever putting audio out 
through the speaker terminals. Well, if you would guess that there's no jumper between the preamp out and pre and power amp in, you would be right. There is none right here, and that will definitely prevent this stereo receiver from ever having anything come out of the speaker terminals, regardless of what's going on inside of it. So, what I have to do, I have to make some jumper cables. Now, I could have bought them on eBay, I thought about that, but I have the means to make that. Right here. I bought these a while ago for another project. And they're angled, so I'd have to finagle them around a little bit, but they'll save me having to go buy some other ones for five bucks. And Radio Shack doesn't sell these angled ones anymore, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, what I can do, I've got some heavy gauge speaker wire. I'm just going to cut it to length, solder it into the center pin on these right here, plug them in, and then we'll have our necessary preamp jumpers right here. So, before I do that though, I can actually just jumper this across with a standard uh, six foot RCA cable. And there might be some signal loss, but it doesn't matter. It'd be good enough for a test. So that's what we're going to do first. And I'm also going to get rid of these damn orange stickers back here because I don't like that. Um, I'm going to take the cover off too before powering this thing on. Uh, this is kind of more of a pre power on evaluation that I'm going to do. Take the cover off, take a peek inside just to see if anything looks out of the ordinary and uh, I've already taken a look at the buttons the volume knob is seems a little stiff but this receiver has been sitting out in the cold for several days now while it's been in transit to me so that may free up a little bit once it gets up to room temperature there but uh, if not doesn't matter that probably means the grease that they used inside of the shaft for the volume control is just a little bit gummed up from age so we'll just have to clean that out if uh, if that becomes a problem. But uh, so far it looks like this receiver is actually in very nice physical condition. I don't see any issues that stand out to me of anything being broken, scratched. The case is not scratched on it. It just needs a good cleaning. The front's got some some nastiness on the front, but that's easy to clean. And sometimes the nastiness actually protects the front from scratches and things like that over time. So sometimes you clean those things up and they look brand new. So, anyway, enough rambling. Let's go ahead and get this cover off and let you see the beast on the inside. And let me tell you what, this is definitely a beast. Judging from the screw heads on the back, it doesn't look like anybody's ever been inside of this thing. So that could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. Hopefully it's a good thing. And there we can see the insides of the beautiful Sansui SX1130. We've got all manner of adjustable potentiometers right there, which that's for the AM section, it looks like, according to the, the labeling on the board. You can see the massive power transformer to this thing. Two filter capacitors. And... Uh, Let's see if I can tell you what they are. They're 10,000. Yeah, they're Nichicons. So they're 10,000 UF Nichicons. 85C. There's not really a whole lot of capacitors to see in here. And that looks like that's the audio protection board in the back back here. See, there's a couple fuses right here, and they don't look like they're blown. You can see the banana jacks right here are, uh, it looks like they're screwed, looks like they're soldered right into that board. And I can see a protection relay down in there, too. I can't really get it on the camera, but um, you can see it's massive heat sink right here as well. Looks like we got four transistor packs down there up against the heat sink. And we got STK pack down here, some sort of 3152 Mark III, I think is what that reads. 
so yeah I don't see anything blown I don't see anything discolored or burned I don't see any resistors that are not looking too good as in slightly burned several Elna caps on this receiver as well which for the era would be about right and I like Elna caps they've always been they always seem like they're really good sounding caps you can see another audio board buried underneath that front panel there just barely make out the capacitors standing to attention there okay so my visual inspection of this unit seems like everything is in order here I don't see anything obviously wrong with it so I feel confident about plugging speakers up to this now I'm not going to plug up speakers that actually are worth something to this mind you but uh, I feel pretty confident that the only problem is it's missing those jumpers on the back there for the preamp so I have a feeling if I just plug those in we will have sound coming out of this and you know that doesn't visual inspection like this doesn't really tell you if there's broken solder joints or anything like that we'll have to see there could be some up here in this display so we'll have to see if all the characters uh, illuminate like they should and stuff like that you know when you're dealing with mid 80s or any really any kind of 80s era uh, stereo receiver or cassette deck or CD player or something like that you always got to be suspicious of of uh, broken solder joints because it seems to be more prevalent in the 80s stuff they seem to like to th flow a little bit less solder across these things back then and I don't know why that's something with the problem with a lot of the Technics uh, receivers great receivers but it's just one of those manufacturing defects that seem to plague all of them like it seems like nowadays capacitors plague everybody so um, yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and get some speakers out and uh, jump these uh, preamp terminals across each other there and uh, I'll bet money that we've got sound coming out of this thing. If everything works the way it should, I'm just going to blow this thing out, put the top back on, and give it a good cleaning and uh, call it good. Alright, the moment of truth. I've already gone ahead and plugged in some Y cables onto the preamp there. Got an antenna, got the speakers hooked up, and these little sharp speakers uh, yeah, that's about all I saved from that system. rest of it uh, didn't work very well even after I bought it brand new. Worked maybe good for about a month or so. So anyway, that's all that's left of it. Good speakers though. So the moment of truth. Hopefully the circuit breaker works. Did you look at that? Hmm, I didn't hear a protection relay. I have the speakers turned off right now, so that might be why. I'd say the display looks excellent. And this is a vacuum fluorescent display, too. Let's, uh, volume is down. You can see that really awesome backlit volume control right there. Okay, I just heard the relay click. I don't hear anything. Let me, uh, where do you, how do you change a channel on this thing? Okay, there we go. All right. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. We've got video disc player here. Somebody's been pushing some buttons here. There we go. No? Well, I hear something in the speakers.
Alright, well so far it's not, I don't have any sound coming out of it. I mean, I heard popping in the speakers there when I selected the video. I can hear that. So, let me see here if there's something I'm missing here. I'll come back in just a second, okay? Alright, so I think I got it figured out here. I had to take it out of FM stereo. Now I got audio. So that means it must not be like my antenna or I need to start playing with some of the tuning coils in there. Yeah, I might have to play with the tuning coils because you see it's just... This is what that uh, Sherwood of mine did. Okay, how do we get out of this auto tuning crap? There we go. Give a little bit, or give a little bit of your love to me. I'll give a little bit. Alright, so, <clears throat> so that's going to complete the evaluation of this Sansui SX 1130. Uh, I know the tuner's going to need a little bit of adjustment. Going to need to blow out. Um, I needed to clean this volume control a little bit too. But uh, so far it looks like everything else is working fine. So this is going to be an excellent, excellent stereo receiver, I hope. I'm going to go through it a little bit more and just kind of test it out here, make sure everything's working, and then I'll start uh, fiddling with it a little bit here if I need to. I'm probably going to do part two to this uh, receiver, so stay tuned for that. Uh, in the meantime, I uh, hope you guys like this, and uh, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. i got to clean this thing up and stuff like that. So in the next video, you're going to see this thing all nice and shiny and polished and looking good. And we'll do a little bit more of a thorough... Um, test of this receiver for sound and test that AM stereo too. I'm kind of curious if there's any AM stations about, around me that broadcast in stereo. I don't know. I never bothered to look that up because I never had a stereo AM receiver before. So, uh, Anyway, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you again right here next time on the Wayback Tech Channel. Peace out everybody.